imagine yourself, you're a product manager and we will want to build something in the travel space. What product would you build? Hey guys, so today we have Abhishek again for Product Sense because you all asked for him again. So for those who haven't met him in the last video, go check that out, but he'll give a short intro today and we're gonna dive into a Product Sense mock question today. Hey, Diane, thanks for inviting me. Hey, everyone, this is Abhishek. I work as lead product manager at Square, where I'm responsible for the online ordering and delivering for the e-commerce platform for Square. Prior to joining Square, I was at PayPal for nine years, working as senior product manager there. Great. I'm so excited to be here. It's so good to have you again, and we're going to have some fun today, and we're going to be talking about traveling. So let's dive right in. So we're going to cover a product sense question today, which is one of the main questions that will be asked or product design at the Facebook, Google of the world. So Abhishek, today, imagine yourself, you're a product manager, and we will want to build something in the travel space. And let's put Facebook aside entirely um, and just imagine that you're a startup. What product would you build? Hmm. Awesome. Makes sense. Um, and then just a few clarifying questions. Then um, are there any resourcing, any funding, any geographical constraints that I should keep in mind or I'm free to explore them? You're free to explore. The world okay. is your oyster. Awesome, that makes sense. What I'm gonna do now is I'll share my screen um, so you can trace my thoughts and we can have a more uh, informed decision and discussion. Awesome. Since this is a pretty broad, open-ended question and travel space itself is big, I would love to first start with why. Like, why do we really want to enter into this space if it really makes sense to enter into travel space in such a time, looking mm. at the macroeconomic conditions and the competitors, et cetera. Then we will look into the travel value chain. Generally, I don't discuss value chains, go straight into the user and problem, but because travel is such an open space, it's a pretty mm. broad area. Let's look at the value chain of travel and see if we can find a specific niche in which we want to operate or just want to take travel in general. Hmm. Would love to establish the mission of a product, uh, business goal, and then I would like to uh, cover target users. Who are the users we'll be focusing on? Look at the user journey, look into their problems, and then dive straight into the solutions. Um, if we have time, again, I, I don't think so we might, but if we have time, I can also talk about some GTM uh, because it's a totally brand new product. We'll mm. maybe we'll talk about some go-to-market strategies if we have time, but low priority. But, yeah, we'll Does that make sense? That out. Yep, that sounds Awesome, good. makes sense. Hey, Dan, let's quickly talk about the why. Um, so if I were to enter the travel space, I think the first thing I generally look whenever I'm entering into a totally new product space is the total addressable market. Like, is this problem or is this space big enough? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have full stats on me, but then travel, we can intuitively tell, is a very big space. It's a billion dollar industry in itself. Other factor to look at when entering a new space is not just the TAM, but also the growth. While the target market may be big, but is it shrinking or is it growing? Mm -hmm. While travel had its own blips due to COVID and it paused for a while, but we see from the news that travel is picking back up. Uh, travel solves a very inherent human need that they really want to explore the world, spend their free time, uh, and I don't see a reason why travel would shrink uh, unless we have a, a, any big disasters like say COVID or anything else. I think travel industry on a whole will keep on growing. Mm. The macro conditions were not viable. If I were to start this maybe a year ago, I would have double thoughts, but as pandemic is easing, economy is opening, flights are back on, people are traveling again. I think macroeconomic conditions are good enough. There are a bunch of competitors in this space who are solving for travel, but I would like to explore them deeply in the value chain because most of these competitors act at different level of travel. And then I would see like if there's any unserved niche here in the value chain that we can target actually. So let me drive straight into the value chain basically. So if you look at the full value chain for travel, I think it starts with discovery. So the first thing is, hey, I have to discover where I'm going to travel. It can be totally intuitive or I'm looking out for inspiration. And players acting in this field of discovery, Insta, which has become very popular with a lot of their travel content and travel influencers coming in, mm -hmm. FP sites like TripAdvisor, or maybe even local magazines that I may subscribe to that can act as a discovery channel for me that, hey, what are some of the places I would love to go to? The first point in the decision. And then basically comes the journey part. I have to plan my journey. I have to do the booking, Expedia, a, a flight websites like United or Trip Actions act a lot in this space. Then comes the stay part that there are players who are optimizing your stay, like stay betters, stay with locals, et cetera, Airbnb, mm. booking.com, local hotels act in this space. And then the core part comes in around your itinerary and local experiences. What would exactly you do when you reach the destination? What are some of the activities mm. that you do? 
So there are tour guides, there are some local players, uh, there are some very niche players in this space. I remember going to Hawaii and when I was trying to go to Road to Hana, I found an app called Shaka Guide that is just responsible for telling me what are the different spots at Road to Hana. So it built out a full itinerary of Road to Hana, but it was very niche and very local. I'm again, it may be, I would do more research when I'm actually building the space, but I would love to see are there any other players. So far, my assumption is I haven't found any strong player mm -hmm. that can help you with local experiences and itinerary. Airbnb is trying to do that, mm -hmm. but it has very limited uh, activities and it doesn't build your full itinerary. It's very disjointed experience that will tell you one or two activities that you can do in isolation. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it has, it is a trend now. If it wasn't a, a few years ago or 10 years ago is once you travel, have you even traveled if you haven't really shared your travel memories mm -hmm. and photographs? So people tend to come back and share it with their friends, families. FPN is start doing a lot in that space uh, and they are the clear winner. I think at one point Flickr was very popular where people used to share mm. a lot of images. Uh, when I look at this value chain, I look at this competitors. I, you know, very intuitively I can see this area is right now underserved. There are not a lot of competitors. It's also an area which is the core part of traveling. Unless you really want to just go and relax at a resort for five, six days, which is again, a, maybe a small population. I think this still becomes the core part of travel. Traveling your itinerary, what exactly are the things you're going to do there? Maybe three days or a week when you're staying there. And what are some of the good, interesting local experiences that you would go and uh, experience there? Hmm. And so you if mentioned... I've, yeah. Please go ahead. That Airbnb, because they have their Airbnb experiences. And you mentioned there's not like that many, that much supply. Can you extrapolate a bit on that? Yeah, let me talk about that. So if you see Airbnb, uh, it, it provides stay. And I think Airbnb really found the gap in the market. Nobody's really doing well. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why they enter into that. But the way they provide you experiences, say I'm going to Portland, I can find what are the different experiences in Portland, maybe an archery class, a cooking class, et cetera. But what Airbnb fails to still do that is build out my good itinerary or good plan. You are here for three days. These are the, all the activities that you can do in three days. Mm -hmm. What it provides are a couple of experiences here and there. And I wouldn't say the list is exhaustive. The list is pretty small. The list is also dependent on the service providers that are on their platform that they have signed up with. Mm -hmm. So it's a good experience. It's not a great experience. It's still disjointed in my opinion. And there's still a lot that can be done here. Compared to other parts, like, you know, flight booking, you have you have flight bookings, you have journey booking app. I can basically build out something that can optimize for cost and saving, but those might be small improvement. It will not be a big mm. jump. It, these are small improvisation. Whereas this is the area where I see we can have a leap in terms of what we can innovate and what we can build. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, no, this I, sounds fun. Definitely, like you said, local experiences is what makes or break the experience. Yeah. Cool. And I also feel this is a good entry into the market because other places, as we see, is already crowded. I think if you enter if you enter here well and if you're able to win the market, it's very easy to go on the adjacencies. Like not only I build your local experience, I'll also find you a way to stay there or also find you a way to reach there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think based on what we have seen so far, this makes the best sense to enter the market with. Mm. Okay. Cool. All right. Now that we have determined that this is the area we'll be entering in, Rest of my journey, finding users, problems, and solution will be restricted into this very niche okay. uh, that we'll be going in. Cool. All right. I think before even we go there, let's do a mission. I love to do this exercise before mm -hmm. building out any new product. It just helps to inspire the team, inspire everyone, and bring them on the same page. Mm. I also believe mission is something that transcends more than you or just your product. Like it's it's a, a bigger, higher calling that you should take care of. And I generally spend a lot of time writing mission, but I try to do best mm -hmm. making it quickly. Um, give me a minute to think about a good mission. Yeah. Okay, not the best mission statement, but some of the few wordings I wanted to focus on was beautiful memories. I guess your local experience are the part of the journey that you remember the most. Like if you ask me, I may not remember my Delta flight from San Jose to New York, but I would always remember the things I saw in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and because we want to show local experiences, something unique, I probably wanted to add something more about a unique lens and unique perspective. There's a way you travel like a tourist. You go there, go to all the touristy spot, but maybe there are activities where you go to a local pub, you understand the history why it was built, get to meet local people, talk to them, experience and understand the culture. So if I were to write my mission, it would focus on these key pillars, making mm. beautiful memories, because this is the part of journey that you always remember, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the local world, understanding the unique lens. So probably this is somewhere roughly where my mission would be that would inspire my team and my people 
to build experience that delights user that makes them happy and that makes everlasting long beautiful memories hmm and when we say unique lens is that supposed to be pointing to the local yep. lens that's yeah that's that's basically pointing to some local experiences and local lens that are mm. not that common commonly known got it got it okay nice since i'm early in the stage i would focus a lot more on adoption as my business goal finding a product market fit and would not like to focus on revenue and i can quickly define adoption is basically one experience booked on the platform i'll probably keep it to one because uh travel may not be a daily thing or maybe mm-hmm. a weekly thing may not be even a monthly thing it may be a bi monthly thing so probably someone is booking one experience on the platform i can say that they might have adopted the platform and you have to go through the full journey of experiencing so that's my business goal focusing on adoption not on revenue because we are early in the cycle and want to look at product market fit hmm. wanted to make sure diana if you are okay with the business goal and we are on the same page and it would make sense yeah so one experience booked on the platform across the time period like if we were to get our data science to measure this yeah yeah that that makes sense i think a uh, good point um i think i would just basically since i'm starting out i will just look at maybe a monthly yeah maybe i'll i'll look at a more like a monthly number mm-hmm. like i will track and again this is more of a full north star and goal setting exercises i would not define my north star here i'm just taking more from a business perspective yeah. i would look at overall adoption numbers on a monthly basis how many experiences that have okay. been booked and delivered to our users okay sounds good Awesome. Let's go and quickly move into our target users. So for my target users, I will basically start with broad category, and then I'll just go and start narrow down. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'm basically dividing it into two parts. Uh, one are the service provider in the travel industry. So if I'm talking about my niche of local experiences mm-hmm. and itineraries, there are players who are service providers who provide service, and then they'll basically be the consumers or the travelers. So let me look into travelers, and then we'll just. think about who do we want to prioritize and who do we want to focus for okay on the traveler side you know there are many lenses on which i can slice and dice this whole traveler thing um let me let me start with this you know like a more common one um generally we try to keep our target segment as messy mutually exclusive and comprehensive mm-hmm. uh on the first look it might look hey friends is also a group family is also a group but one thing to keep in mind is they are still different because with family you may have a recurring theme like i may be traveling with the same set of people when i'm traveling with family or largely same same set of people i know their habit and preference slightly more and better mm. whereas in friends and a group this is not this is a dynamic group my friends can keep changing so that may determine what type of solution mm. i'll be building in and also my tolerance for comfort my appetite for exploration might be very different in a family versus friends and group and solo traveler is altogether a different class of users okay that's cool. a good point now i think my first set of question would be hey do i want to build something for service provider or do i want to build something for travelers right and that's a very typical marketplace problem do you focus on seller first or do you focus on buyer first um i think in this case basically um would love to focus more on the travelers because that will be the core usp of our platform if i'm able to provide a good experience to my travelers service providers will very easily come service providers basically look for avenues where they can get more business mm-hmm. and if my certain app has more value for travelers and they keep coming in i think it will be great value for service provider also to solve the chicken egg problem you can always precede service providers like you can take the listing from craigslist or from other websites other places you can easily reach out the effort to be on the platform is much lower for service provider compared to the traveler like why would i book something from here also uh, yeah basically so basically going back to the core marketplace principle focusing on where the end value lies the end value lies with mm-hmm. the travelers that's in the interest for service provider interest for our platform so we would love to focus on travelers first not saying i ignore service provider but we would want to start to build the best experience for travelers okay now yeah any questions so far All right. Then basically within travelers I think I would like to go f- further down because maybe when I'm starting I would like to focus more. So between family solo traveler and friends and group I would probably try to look at maybe say um uh, my major deciding factor if I were to do a weighted average my major deciding factor will be reach and frequency of use hmm. uh, because I focus is more on adoption. Right. I will keep ARP more as a tiebreaker in the sense because I don't want to go for a market where even in the future I may not receive a r- lot of revenue. so if a certain certain segment has a good revenue potential that's the niche where i would want to grow test and validate mm. and see a product market fit so 
I would do a very quick T-shirt sizing. I'm not doing weighted average for the time and simplicity, but in reality, we actually go with weighted averages, look at more quantitative research in the market. So starting with family, um, reach is large, frequency, I would say medium, and then average revenue, large. And I'll, I'll explain the rationale why I'm thinking it that way. So for family, the reach is large because just looking at the average population, if I see people who are married, people who have family with kids, this is probably a more, much larger segment. The frequency of use might be smaller compared to the others in the sense because sometimes family may be constrained by spring holidays, right. winter vacation, summer vacation, kids going to school. Average revenue per user for family is typically higher because they mm -hmm. value comfort, value the safety of the family a lot more uh, compared to the others. Solo travelers is still a pretty small niche. Uh, um, the frequency of use, I can say it's up to medium, right? Like medium or small. The reason why I didn't say large is because a solo travel cohort as such itself is not always unique. Like you may be solo traveler 80% of the time, but sometimes you may switch cohorts and go on a couple of trips with your friends. Uh, there are very few solo travelers who are like doing it all the time. And that's more as a professional job. Um, hmm. ARPU, I would say, it's medium to small. Solo travelers are more open to try group and shared experience mm -hmm. to uh, remove that loneliness for a certain time. Um, yeah. Group, again, medium, frequency of use large because the group is dynamic. It keeps changing hands. Different people can keep coming in. So a group cohort as a whole typically would have a higher frequency of use. They may not be bounded by a school of children or spring breaks, et cetera, over mm -hmm. a period of time. And we can take more annual trips. Average uh, revenue per user would be small, but because it's a high ticket size, like group by whole can bring a high ticket size. So I'm just keeping it as a medium. Like if you break down to individual user in a group, their capability to pay might be smaller because they may not be open to experiences because they can experience a lot of things as a group together. But mm -hmm. when you consider a whole group, like five people, four people going together, even if they take one of your experience or one of your product, because of the ticket size, the revenue may come be higher. Got it. I, I think, so for yeah, oh. sorry, go ahead. So for a group, would it not be comparative for ARPU as family then? It would be comparable to family then, but um, our hypothesis is as a, if I'm a, as a family member, you may want to prioritize the comfort and the safety of your kids uh, and everyone more than the That's others. Cost a bit more. Okay. Yeah. And as a group, because there are so many people, let me just do pub hopping. Even if I sit, sit on a beach and do nothing, as a friend, we can sit by bonfire, talk, play games. There are a lot more things as a group you can do. Um, and then safety, everything may not be a concern for mm -hmm. people. People Got may it. take shared accommodation. Multiple people can stay within a room. They can take a large house, say. So overall, like I think intuitively, the average spend of a family for travel is sometimes, most of the time, larger than mm. a similar size group. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I think just very looking quantitatively and qualitatively, um, I would probably go with family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think going back, I think one thing that I missed discussing is on the travelers, I should have also broken it down as a Sorry, not that it matters now, but what is important to note is leisure and then mm -hmm. business traveler, right? And and mm. we don't need to do the exercise again because I think business travelers are strapped of time. They go there for a very specific purpose uh, and they may not have enough time or a high frequency of use of whatever product they're building. So I think this prioritization still makes sense. I would still want to focus on leisure and focus on family and maybe maybe not think about business travelers. Yeah, and when we think about local experiences, yes, they might not have that much time to participate in that. Exactly. All right. Uh, any question, Diana, before I move into user journey and quickly start with problems? No, it's very clear. Okay, awesome. All right, quickly on a user journey. Um, say, if I am planning a trip for my family, I would maybe I have booked my flights, I've booked my hotel, I have decided maybe it's, I'm staying there for five, five day, four nights, or whatever frequency mm -hmm. I choose. The next thing comes up okay, what are some of the local experiences that I would share? So probably I would be doing research, call my friends, basically try to ask them about it. Um, over a period of time, I think social validation and social proof has become more and more important, um, especially with a lot of people traveling, they're seeding the information. And again, going for my personal experience, I tend to talk to my friends who have been at the place. My friends talk to me if I've been to a place and they try to make a personal recommendation a lot more or take a recommendation within my own social group maybe my mm -hmm. friends or remote friends, et cetera. Uh, so research, call my friends. Uh, 
look at safety, read reviews, like, is this family friendly place? Is it okay? I'll take a typical user journey. This is not representative of everyone. Some people like do some sort of research, call their friends, look and check the reviews. Like what are some of the activities that are family friendly? Like if there's a pub crawl tour that's happening, probably not the best place I would like to take my two kids mm. and my wife to. Um, plan things out, take feedback from family, um, finalize experience. This is one user journey. A couple of others more on the outlier side can be, I don't plan anything, do a basic check, go to mm. my place, talk to the concierge at my hotel, call a local guide, and then just tell them to plan everything out. So mm. typical user journey, um, more or less the other same, your intensity of research would vary on, on the other journeys, but this is typically what uh, I would say a typical user would follow. Does that make sense? And can I move ahead to the problems? That makes sense. I'm wondering on the experience mm -hmm. side, is there um, anything else in the journey? Yeah, I, I would say on the experience side, like if I want, yeah, we can we can go ahead and break it down to further things. Like, uh, yeah, I, I would say when you're experiencing, actually, you may figure out that, hey, I plan to go to a museum. I need to buy a ticket. Maybe I need to stand in a queue to get that ticket. Uh, I need to keep my family together. Say I'm in Disneyland and there are a lot of, there's a big crowd. I need to ensure my family is together and safe. When mm. you're experiencing for the full day, you might have to solve for food. I may be looking at for recommendations for what are some of the top local restaurants where I can eat, take, take pics together. How do I store all the pics? If I'm visiting a museum or any place of historical significance, I may want to know about history of the place. As a history buff, need to know about some more information about the place while I'm experiencing it. Sometimes these things, may enrich your experience overall, knowing some background about the place. Mm -hmm. May not be applicable for everyone, but some people really value these, this part. Okay. Yeah. Um, hi, let's go into the problem and dive deep into them. I think because we have already, you know, we went into a very specific niche. I think mm -hmm. all our problems are related to itinerary and your local experiences. So building out the itinerary on a place requires a lot of research and effort. I think this is a broad, broad problem statement. If you want, I can further break into sub problems. I think this basically talks about Research, knowing what's interesting or what's interesting in the local area is a challenge. Prioritizing them, finding them is a big challenge in itself. Another problem can be like keeping children busy at the event is challenging. This is specifically true for families, like they are going and seeing a museum or they are visiting a national park. Uh, getting children busy is a big problem for them. And sometimes this becomes a determining factor on how good or bad their experience is. It sometimes ruins the entire experience and not able to uh, look at that. Miss out on a lot of local recommendations, which are not popular. I think, I don't know, a lot of people are guilty and I'm guilty that when I go to Hawaii, I travel it and I come back and realize, oh, there was one thing that I really mm. missed out. It's just because I didn't have a lot of good connections or nobody told me or that place did not have a high SEO or search engine optimization and I couldn't just mm -hmm. find it. So a lot of people miss out on local recommendations, which are not popular. And the final thing is lots of back and forth with the family on getting on the same page. Like, hey, this is the plan. Do you want to review it? And there are not a lot of good ways you do that. Basically, as a person, I build out the plan. I share it with my family members. They look at it. There's a bit back and forth there. Um, although I know their preferences and what they like, there is no easy way for me to know whether this activity would be loved by them or whether mm. they would like it or not. So there's a lot of discussion and back and forth, which further takes into time. Takes, uh, yeah, is pretty challenging. And Assuming you haven't planned well in advance, you go on a page, you go to the concierge and they present you something with local options. Getting on the same page may take some time and that may, you're just basically wasting time on your vacation, mm. which you might have spent enjoying out there. Right. So these are some of the problems that, I've, uh, that I could find out. I think this problem is pretty broad. I think if you're, if you're okay with that, Diane, I'm fine. If you want, we can break it into further sub problems as well. Up to you. Okay, let's go with that in the interest of time. And let me, let me just go ahead and try to prioritize that. The way I try to prioritize the problems is just looking at two important parameters, number of users and depth of pain. Is this problem affecting a small number of users or a large number of users? Mm. Depth of pain. Is it a shallow pain? Are there substitutes that I can look for? Or is, is it actually a very deep pain that I'm going to try mm. to solve for? So building itinerary, I think it applies to a lot of users. At some point of time, you would have to figure out what are the places you would go, what are the places you would select, what are the places you would prioritize or experiences that you would prioritize? That's a lot of cognitive load on just normal human being who are not used to day-to-day -day research or building out the itinerary. And the depth of pain is pretty large. And I can tell it from my experience or my experience from my friends, 
we just throwing the ball at each other like hey can you plan can you plan uh, so keeping children busy i kept it small because not everyone may have small children that need attention some may not have in families some may have bigger children who don't need hand holding attention although the number of users is small the depth of pain is large because this problem is not frequently occurring but when it occurs it's mm. really a big pain missing out a lot of local recommendation i would say a medium uh, not everyone does that some do that and whenever that happens the depth is not big like hey i visited 9 out of 10 places if i missed out one place like is it that big of a deal breaker would i be mm. sad about that it's i would say it's a minor inconvenience a lot of back and forth with family on getting to same page i would say um i would keep it small a lot of time different people may not have a point of view or point of opinion they said hey just figure out the best path and mm. we'll be on the same page mm. and even when it occurs i won't say that's a big problem or like you would enter into a fight or cancel the trip because mm-hmm. you did not settle on a problem so questionable yeah. me and my brother yeah. gets into fights all the time all, all the time yeah. <laughs> i mean there are several reasons you can get into fight too but okay <laughs> if you're getting fight at this thing the problem is bigger that travel to so probably yeah Awesome. Um cool. I I think it's very intuitive. It wasn't a hard prioritization that I have to look at. I think probably the first one building out the itinerary of places which require a lot of research and effort. I would just say that basically stands as a true winner over here. So let me prioritize this problem and try to solve for this and these mm-hmm. might become as a second or third milestone in our solution. All right. So here are some of the solutions that I quickly jotted down um that we'll have to discuss with you. Um let's start with the first one. I just try to give every solution more like a code name or a nickname. Mm-hmm. My naming is bad, it. so don't just. No, it's me. great. It's short and memorable. All right. So the first solution is local lens. Basically, what we would do is you enter your destination, and then what we will do is connect you to the local guides out there that can plan the journey end to end. Um, I see this as more as a white glove treatment, and maybe for the most premium users, like I don't want to spend any time in research. You just tell me out there, and then I can just hit. look at the review of the guide hit next and then that guide can plan a custom itinerary for me based on what i want to do whether i want to surprise my wife on a yacht trip at a sunset mm. cruise or give a very lovely experience to my kids um the guides can do that for me yeah. and is um, the guide going with you along or it's mostly they plan for you and then you go figure out yeah we can we can figure out a type of service like a guide can be a consultation only or a guide can be along with you only it depends on what service type the guides provide and i think the local guide market is very fragmented like you go to a place and you find a market i haven't seen any product or any solution out there that have tried to combine the pool of guides together and bring them on a platform hmm um trip bunny you enter the destination you enter the budget uh the time that you have and this trip bunny builds out the entire schedule and plan for you so if you are going out for four days your budget is like 100 dollars per day Here are the list of list of activities that you can do. Here is a paid activity, free activity that you can do, and you can always go ahead and change it. But it will give you a strong template and a full schedule to start with. Over a period of time, that can look take into consideration your allergies, your preferences. You can connect your social profile, and then I can also look at what kind of person you are—a mountain person, a beach person, a party person, a city person, etc. Mm. So a lot of potential for this idea to further grow. Travel buddies inside. enter destination and get pics and insights from your friends like it can look into my social graph all my friends who went to hawaii and figure out what are the different places that they have been to i can look at the personalized pic if i like someone i can always call them uh, i will quickly call out a trade off here it's a called the cold start problem because i need to have a lot of my friends on the platform mm. i need to allow users to connect the social profile and give me the auth permission to connect so it will have a cold start problem and we have to figure out what is that incentive because of which people will connect their accounts another thing is trip marketplace thing like it can be a platform to share itinerary like i build a lot of itinerary i share it with a lot of my friends for free of course but i would love if there's a marketplace where all these custom itineraries that i have built for my trip mm. i can just share it out and maybe i can get rewarded and gain some points maybe virtual point that i can redeem for some awards or some discounts later which is very easy in the travel space as you get a lot of referral bonus and referral margins so these points can convert into valuable and so if i want to go to hawaii i just go hawaii custom itinerary trips and i can see a bunch of them mm. this is much better than going on to google searching multiple blogs not having credibility mm. where i can see a rating and review finally map quest you enter a destination i'll figure out what are the different spots there and then you can build a full itinerary along with pit stops food joints where you can get fuel I think MapQuest is more a map-based solution for road trips. 
again, if a target market, maybe if I'm starting out in the US where road trips are pretty popular and road trips are pretty popular with families going to national park, this can become a very strong niche solution for people going on a road trip. You don't have to plan anything. Just sit in your car, leave your home, and the app has everything figured out for you. Got it. So the difference between MapQuest and Travel Bunny? Uh, travel, travel Bunny, I, I think, is not a full map-based solution, and it's more generic in nature, I think, whereas MapQuest focuses a lot more on road. your road trips Got uh, it. and focus more on fuels, food joints, uh, mm. I can see a world where they both can converge like much later into the future. But I think to start with, probably keep them a little separate. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to do now is quickly do a quick prioritization based on reach, impact, and effort. Is this solution applicable to a wider audience, a smaller mm -hmm. audience? Is it more impactful, getting them closer to their goals, and then effort to build them? And then we'll do a quick prioritization on that. Okay. Again, we'll do a same t-shirt sizing. Local lens, I'll say the reach is small because, again, this thing may come with its own premium cost and premium charge. I see it more of a white glove support for a premium users on the platform. Um, I don't see a reach to be very high. I mean, these options are still available, but a lot of, lot of people may use it. Um, so I would say the reach is small. Impact can be pretty high because, hey, if you can get someone to work for you um, and build the whole thing for you, the impact can be high. Effort, yeah. I see Dan, you have a question. Yeah, go ahead. What's the difference between reach and impact? Um, reach can be number of people your solution is applicable to. Impact can talk more about how deeply the solution solves your problem. Like, does it solve I slightly? See. Does it solve more? Uh, and again, if we had set up our own Nostar metrics and KPIs, I would set and look at how much closer to our goals and KPIs mm. this impact is taking us to. Mm. Uh, I've also added a sort of adoption lens. Like I also see in terms of adoption, uh, where it will work. Got it. But quickly, yeah. The reason I said it's small, it can be more of a premium white glove service. Mm -hmm. Impact is super high. Effort to build is small, but effort to scout local guides, convince them to be on a mm. platform. And because they are more of a fragmented market, getting them off a platform may be a significant effort. So mm. I put the effort as medium over here. Trip Bunny, definitely high reach because it's a very generic solution that takes in my choices and preference and build out an itinerary for me. Impact can be pretty high. At least that's what we aim for. It will solve all your problem. The effort to build might be very high in the sense because even if I start with a very small market, say just California, and I need to have a lot yeah. more destination. I need to find out what are the local things there. So there's a lot of legwork to build out uh, right. this thing. And then I have to build out the whole matching algorithm and probably want to find out some USP where I can learn from uh, my users so that I don't face the fear of disruption because I think this idea, if I just do it on a very simple rule-based thing, can be easily copied and disrupted. So I need to find that unique thing in my algorithm that can make it accurate. And I would say the effort can mm. be pretty high to do that just to find out the local location. The, also, the other problem with going very niche or very small is, hey, trip finder just for San Francisco, I, I think adoption would take a lot more, lot more time if I just go very small here. Um, trip buddies inside. The reach might be very small just because of the cold start problem. How not a lot of people may agree to share their data with a platform. Um, as such, building this solution may have a small reach. Kind of have a medium impact because the data will be very unstructured coming from my friends. They may not mm. be covering everything. Even if I look at their data, I may not make any strong conclusions on how do I plan my trip. Like I still mm. might do some more research. And so it solves my pain point, but not to a complete extent. Mm. Effort, I would say, would be pretty small because I literally cannot go and convince folks. I think it's just more about the building the engine and platform and basically doing some more effort on the marketing uh, side. Trip Marketplace, uh, medium reach, uh, more in the sense of um, my platform will be restricted by the number of people I can get on my platform with custom itineraries. Like it may happen that I may get a lot of itineraries about Hawaii very less itinerary about California and such. So even if I go in a niche market, uh, I will still be constrained by the number of people who build out the itineraries and share on the platform. So I would say a medium reach. Mm. Impact can be super high if we have a strong rating and strong vetting process in the beginning. Effort can also be very high in actually building out the whole marketplace platform if that's the MVP of our product, having a both a service provider side and a service receiver side. MapQuest, uh, a medium reach considering Maybe if our target market is US to begin with, where there are a lot of road trips, it's still not as high as uh, Trip Bunny because again, it's again into niche of um, road trips. 
So I wouldn't say that reach would be very high. Impact can be pretty good. Effort will be pretty high, again, because I would have to integrate with map-based API, figure out the different nodes and point, find out the optimal path. So I can see, mm. yeah, I, if I have to say, I would probably even go Excel because building out a map-based solution mm. and finding out pit stops and pool joints and fuel can be a pretty intensive effort. Uh, I think the two candidates that stand out are Trip Bunny and Trip Marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, similar impact, similar effort, but I guess the reach for Trip Bunny might be slightly higher than Trip Marketplace because we can quickly out source a lot of information in-house and can ensure the quality. Getting a lot yeah. of quality itineraries out might be tough and take more time yeah. uh, and mm. the reach will be smaller. So, what about well, an effort between these two? Like if now we're comparing these two in terms of effort, do we think they're the same level of effort that you labeled it both large? Yeah, now that I have an extra characteristic of Excel, probably I would say this will be large trending more towards Excel in my opinion. And let me let me give me let me pause and think about a little bit more to go back to my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably keep them the same, right? Because what I'm looking for is not just the engineering effort, but I'm thinking about more of the launch effort. While destination building is more of an in-house team, I may spend a lot more time on the actual build. The build here would be slightly similar, like because I would have to build out more of a marketplace model and a platform model compared to more of an in-house first party solution. I would also have to, and this might be easier because I may not have to focus on a as deep an algorithm or mapping right. as I'm doing in Trip Bunny. But at the same time, my effort would also be increased by sourcing out these people who would basically be the seed sellers on my platform. Like, hey, inviting a lot of people to build out the itineraries. Maybe I can seed this with a lot of, you know, like in-house account, like how Amazon does. They have a WS retail entity which mm -hmm. acts like a third party seller, but it belongs to Amazon. Like maybe that's a good idea. I can start with Trip Marketplace with that. In that case, my effort can probably be medium. Like mm. it might be a smaller effort. And it depends on the incentives. You mentioned yeah. above that you might incentivize them with points or maybe they can translate those points into uh, things they can buy travel with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the point is right. When you, you open the platform for incentive, there has to be a proper vetting structure. Like I cannot post any content without review. Like what people have profane language, abusing, mm -hmm. like they, they put profane images. I see. In the beginning, when I'm going, I have a brand to build. I would not be comfortable putting out any content without properly vetting and thoroughly looking right. at it. So the amount of research I'll be doing in Trip Bunny for a particular place, I would have to do almost similar research here because I'll be vetting uh, what the users are proposing on the platform, at least initially. Over a period of time, I will have certain power users who I can have more relaxed criteria compared to right. the others or build out a uh, foul language detection uh, algorithm mm -hmm. or, yeah, et cetera. But I think in the beginning, my effort would be similar. Where I said the effort can be min minimum is when I was thinking that, hey, maybe I can seed this place, seed the marketplace with a lot of bot entries like, hey, build out like a few users uh, and then they can be sharing the itineraries over it. So I can see the marketplace with some of the initial users who are our in-house content writers. Yeah. That way the, the effort might become a little bit medium. That's a good but point. But again, yeah. Cool. I, I think overall, yeah. If I were to do that, yeah, I, I think it might be better. So I'm right now divided probably between Trip Bunny and Trip Marketplace. Uh, give me 30 seconds and probably I can think about a uh, more way to prioritize which of the solution I'll be going forward. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm thinking my reach and impact will be similar, uh, my reach is smaller over here, but my effort is smaller. I think another thing I would do and look at is my starting business goal, which I've sent is adoption. I would probably go forward and see which one of them will lead to better adoption. The only challenge with I see with the trip marketplace is the whole idea of trust. If I'm coming into a particular marketplace and I see itineraries by different people, do I trust them? It's something that we need to be tested out initially, right? And adoption may take much longer uh, because first we have to build a trust in the market, have people trust out it. Whereas on Trip Bunny, it's something that has been generated based on user own preference, at least from the UX perspective. I enter my destination budget and the system basically builds out an itinerary for me that I can edit in system and go forward with it. I think this one would be closely tied to our brand, may lead to better adoption. Uh, and may have lesser adoption concerns and lesser trust and safety concern. Uh, yeah. Also, I, I, I would say there may be also privacy concern that people may feel that, hey, like a mm. lot of strangers may be knowing that I'm purchasing an itinerary for them, that maybe I'm going here. Whereas on the on the Trip Bunny, it might be restricted within a first party platform, Trip Bunny, and I'm sharing my data with only one company. 
So there may be perceived privacy concerns mm. as well in one scenario versus the other. I think so based on all those factors, I'll probably lean towards a uh, trip bunny. Hmm. Great. Shall we debrief? Awesome. Yeah, sure. All right. So let's talk. So, so many things that worked and I got a chance to write it down. So let me talk through it. So if we start at the top, what I like that you did here was the why you basically analyzed like how a business would think about entering a space. How big is it? Is it growing macro conditions, competitors? It's kind of funny because I was creating a video for this uh, thing today. And those are the exact points. I mean, if you've done consulting before, they cover those things as well. So that just felt very business savvy versus I see a lot of people kind of just speak to, oh, like travel space is interesting. It's exciting. It's like mission oriented. And that's about it. Well, you always have to realize a business is building this and they're going to care about the things that you mentioned. Uh, Value chain, like you said, this travel space is very broad. So narrowing down seemed to have helped you dive into something more specific rather than feeling overwhelmed by this whole space. So good job covering all the different competitors and prioritizing the local experiences um, as to being the space that maybe needs more solutions than the other ones that are a bit crowded. Um, I like the mission as well. Usually the mission is a bit contrived, but I like how you emphasize what you mean by beautiful memories. A lot of times the words itself sound generic, but when you kind of explained it, it was like, okay, I can see how we're going to make what we're striving for unique. Business goal was really helpful, especially narrowing on the metric. And then you brought that back towards the end to help you prioritize solutions. So that felt good. The who was, again, super exhaustive, so great. You probably didn't need to go into service providers uh, as in write down all those thoughts because we actually didn't talk through it. Um, so that was, that is somewhere where people, you guys can save time if you need, um, something I want to call out that you did continue consistently and just really stood out was your prioritization. So it was very clear every step of the way, why you chose what you chose, why this was like a large versus medium. And I think that stood out to show that you're a logical thinker, that you make decisions based on data versus based on what you feel. So that was consistent in the user part and the pain points part and the solutions part. So that really stood out. So as always, what are two to three tips you would give to people to help them build strength in product sense? Because a lot of people struggle with this type of question. I'm sure. Interestingly, I wrote an article on LinkedIn um, a few days back. Guys, make sure to check that out. Um, I, I think I would say, you know, focus on why more as a PM, it's a very cliche and very popular saying is fall in love with the mm. problem and not solution. Yes. So focus on your why, your mission and business goal, really important. I see the best of candidates fail at why. They jump straight into the users, the problem and solution, but focus a lot more on why. It shows your strategic side. One good way to develop strong product sense is basically to expose yourself to more products. Like look mm-hmm. at what are the different products out there. Do a lot of product tear downs. Think about how those problems exist. Um, and typically, you know, we, we don't get to experience all of them. For example, right, when I was preparing for my PM interview journey, I don't use a health tracker, a Fitbit, or an Apple Watch at all. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. hey, what if somebody asked me a question around that? Of course, I can say I don't use that and I may mm-hmm. blabber something, but unless mm-hmm. I experience it, I wouldn't know about it, right? Yeah. So try to get more exposure. Look at what are the interesting apps out there? What are some of the interesting design patterns, product patterns out there? Once you start looking different products, in your mind, you will start connecting the dots and start seeing a different pattern. And that basically, that's what we call basically a product sense. You look at the problem, you will understand what users might need and what would be a good solution to serve them. So as always, Abhishek, amazing job. You need to teach folks this um, because you've got a lot of amazing insights. So again, thank you so much for your time. This is as always super, super fun. And I know everyone's going to find a lot of value in this. Thank you, Dana. I really appreciate the work you're doing for the PM community. And you're just putting out for free there for people. So I love to come to your platform because I see you as a person who genuinely wants to help people and help people break into PM. So thanks for the amazing work you're doing. Kudos to you. The work we are doing because you are part of this journey. So thank you so much for being part of this community. Thank you, Dana. Thanks a lot. As, As always, it was amazing talking to you. Amazing having those discussions. Yay. And I will see you guys later.